Good morning everyone welcome to the trainees present all over the UK and also worldwide for our FRCS urology training program we are so glad to start the second batch of 2021 who are going for exams in November we got our first trainee Emika who has kindly volunteered to take part in the session and also quite happy to record the session for the benefit of others for the trainees i will give a kind of an introduction from today onwards we will do the fcs urology table based subject discussions and scenarios as we go nearer to the exam we will do exact 10 minutes uh, exam based uh, scenario discussions and also uh, appropriate feedback and um, all the trainees who are interested to take part will be given more than enough chances to take part so if you have not given a chance to take part in the discussions please wait for your turn i am sure by the time of the exam you all will have more than enough uh, practice sessions and uh, revisions uh, thank you emika um, are you happy to start the discussion yes please yeah you have a 64 year old gentleman uh gp has written a letter to you stating that uh, he has got a visible hematuria it's a two week pathway referral the referral letter has reached your desk what will you do so i will arrange to see this patient um urgently in my um one stop hematuria clinic where i will take a history um examine the patient and perform a flexible cystoscopy Um, in my history, I will establish if this is visible or non-visible hematuria. Um, if it's painful or painless um, hematuria, I would ask about any recent or associated UTI, um, any um, recent instrumentation. Um, I'll ask about background lower urinary tract symptoms, um, and I'll ask about symptoms of of anemia such as tiredness. Um, I would also ask about symptoms of um, metastatic or advanced disease such as weight loss um and then I'll, I'll establish this patient's past medical history drug history including anticoagulation status and ascribe a performance status to this patient um i will with the patient's um, consent and a chaperone present i would examine this patient perform a general urological examination um abdominal examination feeling for a palpable bladder um examine their genitalia and perform um uh, a digital rectal examination um to feel for the prostate um using a bowel consent form i will dis- explain the risks benefits and alternatives of a flexible cystoscopy and with a signed consent i will go ahead to perform a cystoscopy um i would ensure that this patient has a negative urine dip uh, before um proceeding with this um and in the flexible cystoscopy I'll inspect the urethra prostate um bladder looking for any of this bladder tumor um following on from this I will um organize our request for some bloods including full blood count and urinis and clotting um and arrange an upper tract imaging given that this is visible hematuria I'll arrange a CT urogram do you do clotting for all the patients with visible hematuria um this will depend on the history of of anticoagulation status if not i wouldn't necessarily do a clotting okay you said you will discuss the alternatives to flexible cystoscopy what alternatives you have so in this in this setting um th- there isn't really um uh, a recommended alternative um a, a, an upper tract imaging um will pick up about 85% but miss 15% of bladder cancer so in in reality um I will encourage this patient to go ahead with a flexible cystoscopy. Okay. What are all the two week pathway referral criteria for the GP? What kind of patients he can refer to you? So, the <clears throat> the um consensus statements um by Baus and um the nephrology um association recommends um referral um to the two week pathway of um patients who are i think are both 40 with unexplained um visible hematuria um in the absence of any UTI um or 
Uh, I think this is what I can remember. Okay. Uh, you can quote NICE guidelines, which is much more appropriate. Um, it states like uh, aged above 45, aged 45 or over with unexplained visible hematuria without UTI or visible hematuria persists or recurs after successful treatment of UTI. The other group is aged 60 or over with unexplained non-visible hematuria and either dysuria or raised WCC in the blood test. So easy, yeah, easy to remember, two groups aged 45 and over with uh, unexplained visible or visible hematuria persist or recurs after UTI, aged 60 or over with unexplained non-visible hematuria with uh, dysuria or white cells in the blood test. There is an another clause considered non-urgent referral for bladder cancer in people aged 60 or over with recurrent, persistent, unexplained UTI. Uh, this is from NICE. It's always easy and uh, correct to present the NICE guidelines rather than the BOWS one. Okay. okay. Um, you said you will do a DRE and uh, maybe PSA while attending visible hematuria. What is the reason behind that? So... Um, prostate cancer can also present with visible um, hematuria, hence the, the necessity to examine the prostate um, by DRE, um, but also to document a PSA as, as this may be, uh, it, it may pick up um, a very raised PSA, which would be in keeping with prostate cancer yeah, or again, suspicion of prostate cancer. Yeah, good. Again, uh, there is a referral pathway for the prostate cancer advised by NICE. Um, when you are revising the discussions, what we are doing now with uh, the YouTube link, you will have the link to the screenshots of the NICE guidelines at the time. So as per the prostate cancer referral pathway, anybody with visible hematuria should have PSA and digital rectal examination as per the NICE referral. So you can yeah. quote the NICE pathway referral again. Yeah. Okay. Now, you are doing the flexible cystoscopy for this patient. Uh, what is the role for cytology? You said you will do cytology, isn't it? Yeah, so um, urine cytology is um, will we'll pick up high-grade bladder cancer um, or urethelial cancer. And so in the initial assessment, especially with visible hematuria, um, and this is helpful, um, because it, it has a high sensitivity for picking up um, high-grade urethelial cancer. Okay. Um, is there any evidence behind doing cytology you are aware of? Um, not on top of my head. Sorry. Okay. Um, maybe you can quote this in the exam. Uh, if you remember in our regional audit day last year, um, I don't want to mention unnecessarily the names. Uh, one yeah. of the team from our West Midlands area has presented quite a large series. They have looked into like almost 2,000 to 3,000 patients presented with hematuria, of which they selected randomly 500 patients and they looked at cytology. Whenever the cytology is negative, it is useless. We'll go with whatever the cystoscopy findings or imaging findings. Okay. Whenever the cytology is positive, there is always a positive finding in the cystoscopy or in the imaging. So yeah. either way, not even one patient benefited from cytology, which means the cytology is positive, but all other methods were negative and we may have missed the cancer, but for the cytology. So that never yeah. happened. Uh, it's a nice publication. The publication is under review in Journal of Endoluminal Endourology. Uh, okay. Possibly will be released by the time um, uh, you are going for the exam. So okay. it, it's because the role of cytology is, is very questionable because um, it is cumbersome. It uh, costs around 70 pounds for every patient. And uh, sometimes the cytology shows um, uh, suspicious cells whenever the patient had some UTA episodes that suspicious cells makes the patient to undergo further flexible cystoscopies and uh, clogging the whole system. Um, yeah. So you can discuss either way, but that you are a pro cytology or against cytology, mm. but uh, make sure that you back up with your ideas. Okay. Um, what do you know about uh, other alternatives like um, to improve your efficiency in flexible cystoscopy? Do you aware of anything? So, um, 
there, there is there's the um, blue light cystoscopy, um, which can increase the diagnostic sensitivity. Um, that may involve instilling five amino um, levulinic acid, um, and depends on the handling of uh, biotumor cells of this um, chemical. And when blue light is instilled, um, it gives a red fluorescence and increases the, the diagnostic sensitivity of, of cystoscopy, especially for um, CIS. Okay. Any other methods you have heard of? Um, there's the... No, this is the, the only one I can remember. There's a second one that I can remember now. Yeah, narrow band imaging. Yeah. Uh, do you know how it works? Um, not exactly. Okay. Narrow band imaging is, is much more simpler to the blue light cystoscopy because you are not supposed to instill anything. It is uh, easily compatible with the Olympus stack system in case if it available in your hospital. All you have to do is you just have to switch uh, into the narrow band uh, imaging range so that uh, the blood vessels will become more prominent and that will help us to delineate the extent of the tumor and also to find any suspicious uh, tumors where easy to differentiate a red patch from a tumor etc uh, these are much more useful when you are actually performing TURBT but uh, now the narrow band imaging is extended even to an outpatient flexible cystoscopy clinics okay you are doing a cystoscopy and you find a 2.5 centimeter pedunculated possible TCC like lesion above the left ureteric orifice, solitary lesion. So, how are you going to proceed? So, I will, in the presence of a uro oncology nurse, explain to this patient that this um, is strongly suggestive of a bladder tumor, um, that the patient will require um, a TRAL BT to resect this lesion, but also to provide us with histological um, information as to the grade and stage um, of the cancer. Um, I will use a BOWS consent form and explain the risks and benefits of this procedure, risks including um, generic, um, general risks like infection, bleeding, more importantly, um, bladder perforation. Um, I would also explain to the patient that um, because of the size of a tumor and appearance of a pedunculated tumor, I will recommend the patient has intracycle um, mitomycin to reduce the risk um, of recurrence. Um, following on with, from this, I'll get the patient to sign a consent form and arrange for them to come in for a TRBT. Okay. And um, you can use the term Macmillan nurse, which is much more little bit uh, a commonly used term rather than uro-oncology, but okay. uh, both are equally good answer. Yeah. And, um, um, on the day when you are uh, doing the TRBT, what uh, precautions you need to take? So, um, in an appropriately uh, consented and anesthetized patients, given that this is on the left lateral wall, um, I will um, warn my anesthetist about the risk of obturator kick and um, advise or, or request for uh, general anesthesia with um paralysis um intraoperatively i'll perform an eua um assess the bladder for any satellite lesions and and then resect the tumor um, to minimize the risk of obturator kick or bladder perforation i will i'll ensure that the bladder is not fully not too distended um i will use um short bursts of current um I will um, so I'll, I'll keep the valve not to the standard use short bursts of current um, to to minimize the the risk of um, obturator. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> so um, I told you that the the lesion is like two point five centimeter just above the left uh, ureteric orifice. Uh, there is nothing wrong in uh, taking it as a left lateral wall lesion, but uh, mm. uh, my aim is to discuss few things like how are you going to do TRBT if a lesion is closer to ureteric orifice. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 
Um, so if, if this happens, lot of examiners are happy. Uh, at least you have brought out your knowledge about how to deal with a, a lateral wall tumor, how to mm. avoid uh, obturator kick. So it's not a very bad thing. So the usual advice is uh, there will be a pen and uh, paper in the table. So whenever the examiner says any values like PSA value, post void residue, uh, 2.5 centimeter, the lesion position. So try to make a note of it so that you can uh, discuss exactly the same patient rather than yeah. discussing in general. Uh, okay, so how are you going to resect the, resect the tumor? Uh, so so let, let's say you're doing TRBT, everything is going well. How will you yeah. finish it? So this is a tumor close to the left ureteric orifice. I'll be cautious not to cause any damage um, to to the left UO. So I will resect away from the right or left UO. This is a pedunculated tumor. Um, there's also an option to to use a, a biop a cold cut biopsy forceps to to pluck off um, the stalk of this tumor. Um, and then take a deeper, a deeper base biopsy. Um, but more importantly, in during coagulation, I'll be careful not to um, use a rollable ball over the left ureteric orifice. Okay, good. That, that's what uh, my main interest is to see how cautious you are with the ureteric orifice. Um, what is your view on the in block resections? This is a pedunculated tumor, so anyway, it may come in block. Say, for example, a flat tumor. Uh, again, 2.5 centimeter in the floor of the bladder. Uh, what is your view on in-block resection and why it is important? So, um, on-block resection is, is um, being recently popularized as a technique for um, bladder tumor resection. Um, I think for tumors less than three centimeters, you can use this technique um, safely um, and carefully um, Resecting the tumor. This can be done with a with a di diatomy um, loop or collinch knife, or even with laser. Um, and the idea is to carefully uh, resect the tumor um, in a, a slow but steady um, progress, peeling off the tumor on block um, of the bladder mucosa. Um, so th this is essentially what, what on block resection entails, provides a, a whole, a, a bulk of a tumor for histological analysis rather than piecemeal uh, resected tumor. So what is the advantage, uh, Mika? So it provides the, the whole tumor as one piece. Um, it will also, um, the, the, the base of a tumor, I believe would also be um, a part of the, the resected specimen. Um, the, I'm not sure whether risk of bladder perforation is, is lessened with this procedure or if it's worsened, but um, it's not what I perform in my practice, but I know that this, this um, technique has been popularized recently. Yeah. Uh, so the main advantages of in-block is, number one, you are removing the tumor in total. And um, the, the, there should be an inclusion of the muscle in the same specimen. So when the pathologists are looking into the specimen, they need, don't need to uh, search with um, multiple tissue pieces to find which one has got the muscle. And uh, a single specimen always gives the pathologist a very nice orientation, which is the luminal side, which is the muscular side. Say, for example, if you are doing a partial nephrectomy, we will remove only in block. We won't do it a piecemeal. So it maintains yeah. the oncology principle. The yeah. other, maybe a theoretical reason, which we don't know, uh, or maybe the time will tell, is uh, we know that uh, patients who underwent T or BT, um, we do few things to prevent further recurrence, like a tumor floating, etc. And mm -hmm. uh, when the recurrence happens, usually the recurrence happens to the dome because the tumor cells float in the bladder urine and uh, especially in the top surface of the urine and when it comes in contacts with the, with the dome, the dome will have more chances of getting the recurrence and that's why the recurrent T or BT will be in the dome commonly. And um, so those things can be avoided since we are not producing too much of floating tumor cells and we are removing the tissue in block. 
The second reason what I said is more theoretical, uh, we don't know, we need to have a good volume studies to see the outcome of the in block. But the first reason pathologically it is now well established. Yeah. Uh, be you aware of any studies which uh, looked into the quality of T or BT uh, which we can quote in the exams? So they, the RESECT um, study which is I think it's recently published. I'm not sure what they what the figures are, but um, this did look into the quality of the TRBT. And more recently, um, in our region, we've done um, a, a multi center study called um, HIT, which also looks to some extent at the quality of TRBT. So he made sure after TRBT with um, collated regional data as well um, on that. Yeah, uh, you need to discuss the RESEC study at least because uh, it's, a, it's a burst sponsored study approved by BAUS. There is a good possibility most of the lot of the examiners units are enrolled in the RESEC study. Uh, the, the quality parameters are almost the same. Um, few things which are extra or after the TE or BT, there should be a provision available for us to uh, mention the size of the lesion and position of the lesion and also a pictorial representation so that uh, in follow-up we will know whether the recurrence happens in the same area or not. Presence of muscle in the tissue is one of the quality parameter. Uh, most of the things are expected but uh, mm. it's nice to discuss under a, a named study. So yep. any burst sponsored study or quite UK based studies and it's very useful when you are quoting it in the FRCS exams. Yeah. Okay, good. You have finished the TRBT. Uh, let's say you have used a monopolar loop and you have resected the tissue in two or three pieces and you are happy with the resection. How are you going to exit from the surgery? So I will perform a careful hemostasis. Um, controlling any any of these bleeders. Um, I'll evacuate all resected pieces and, and put this in a in a pot for histology. Um, I'll perform a post-TRBT EUA, um, insert a pre-way catheter, and depending on whether I have the facilities, I can give mitomycin inside theater or I can commence irrigation and I arrange for mitomycin to be given within um, 12 hours of resection. Okay, what is the evidence between uh, for mitomycin? So uh, the, there's a meta-analysis by Sylvester um, et al. that um, demonstrated um, that post-op, single-dose post-op um, intracycle mitomycin reduces the risk of recurrence um, relative re risk reduction of, of 39%, uh, absolute risk reduction of 12, and, uh, and then number needed to treat of 8.5. Okay, so how much mitomycin you will give? So I'll give 40 milligrams of mitomycin, um, uh, put in the bladder left for um, a couple of hours and, and, and removed. Okay. Uh, patient underwent uneventful post-op period. The histology came as uh, G2, low grade, PTA, TCC of the bladder with presence of muscle in the tissue. What will you do? Okay, so this will be in keeping with a, a low risk um, tumor according to risk um, stratification. Um, this needs to be discussed and validated at a urology MDT. Um, the MDT will likely recommend, in line with NICE guidelines, a flexible cystoscopy at three months and a further flexible cystoscopy um, 12 months from surgery. And if there is no evidence of recurrence to discharge to this patient at this point. Okay. And um, any imaging needed? You haven't done any imaging from the start? So I actually requested a CT urogram um, okay. for this patient. So I will. Um, assess that there isn't any other tract lesions or indeed any other um, abnormalities on the CT. Um, in, in, a, in the follow-up period, given that this is a low-risk tumor, this patient doesn't require any further um, CT after the original CT urogram. What is the role of CT thorax in bladder cancer for staging? 
So this will be for um, for muscle invasive um, bladder cancer to to give a complete TNM staging of of a bladder cancer. But I wouldn't routinely request it for a superficial um, bladder cancer. Okay. Uh, if this patient's histology is uh, G2 high grade PTA, how will you uh, risk certify? So, G2 high grade um, PTA, so all high grade tumors will be um, classified as high risk. Um, and so, this patient um, will require in addition to TRBT, um, a course of BCG to prevent recurrence, but more importantly, prevent um, progression of a tumor. Okay, uh, G2 high grade is intermediate risk. It's very common for uh, this mistake to happen, thinking all the high grade, all G3 are high risk. All G3 are high risk, no doubt in that, but G2 high grade, especially with PTA, is intermediate risk. So you need to tailor according to that. How will you okay. risk, risk categorize the non-invasive bladder cancer? So the, the risk stratification um, puts them into high risk, intermediate risk, and, and low risk. So, um, G, so all G1 um, and G2 tumors, PTA, less than three, Centimeters solitary lesion uh, will be low risk. Um, all G3 tumors, PT1 tumors, um, plus CIS and multifocal will be um, high risk. And anything in between will be intermediate risk. Yeah, and uh, also you need to add aggressive variants of urethral cancer yeah. like micropapillary yeah. or nested variants or high risk. Okay. Yeah. Um, so for intermediate risk, what is your follow-up protocol? So there is a recommendation for, um, well, the patient needs flexible cystoscopy at three months um, and then and subsequently. But more importantly, for intravesical treatments, um, there's recommendation for uh, a six course of mitomycin to, to reduce um, recurrence. In, in this intermediate risk category. Okay. And uh, any low risk tumor which recurs within 12 months will be upgraded to intermediate risk. Intermediate risk, yeah. That also you can bring in. Okay. Um, now, this patient, um, let us say low risk as we said, and you are discharging the patient with three monthly and 12 month flexi. If it is intermediate risk as the second option we had, G2 high grade PTA, what is your follow up protocol? apart from mitomycin? So the patient will need um, cystoscopy at three months, um, six months, 18 months, and then annually up to five years, um, I believe, and can be discharged if there's no recurrence um, at that point. Okay, it is uh, three months, nine months, 18 months, and yearly uh, thereafter. Yeah, like five, yeah. five years is okay. So three, nine, and eight. Three, nine, nine, yeah. Okay. And uh, in the follow-up, what is your follow-up criteria? And uh, do you need to do cytology in the follow-up? And uh, how will you further counsel this patient? So for intermediate risk, um, I don't think you need to do cytology. Um, I may be wrong, correct me. Okay. So I think I think flexible cystoscopy, as as outlined. Yeah. And I don't. I'm not sure you need to do upper tract imaging either. Yeah. For patients. Yeah, cytology is mainly for CAS follow up, so not yeah. much used for low risk or intermediate risk uh, population. So this patient uh, G2 high grade PTA, you treated this patient with mitomycin six weeks. Three month and uh, nine month uh, flexis were okay, but 18 month flexi showed a uh, recurrence in the floor of the bladder, very small one, a very tiny, like a two millimeter lesion. So, what will you do? So, I will 
explain this to the patient and arrange for this um, lesion to be resected or biopsy and, and sent for histological analysis uh, and discussed in MDC. Depending on the histology, I will proceed further with the appropriate management plan. Okay, the histology comes as G1 low risk or low grade PTA. So this is not, this doesn't demonstrate progression. Um, so this is a G1 PTA um, tumor. So um, I don't think this qualifies um, this patient to be escalated to the high risk category. So I will carry on my surveillance um, as per intermediate risk. Okay. Um, do you aware of the EAU guideline scoring system? Um, I can bring that up, but I, I haven't got that <coughs> in, committed to memory at the moment. Yeah. But let me just bring it up. Yeah. You can discuss that uh, as you wish. Um, I okay, think uh, right. for the starting, we are happy to stop at this position. We have discussed uh, quite extensively on low risk bladder cancers. Uh, um, any specific things from your side, Emika? What do you think? How it went? So I think I think my approach uh, to the questions are systematic. Um, you can see that I still have a few knowledge gaps that I need to to fill um, in preparation for the exam. So I need to 100% um, remember these guidelines and the follow-up protocol. Um, so, but I guess this is what this um, discussion is all about: to expose this knowledge gaps and and fill them up before the exams. Yeah, perfect. Uh, Anish, you have anything to give a feedback? Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, it was an excellent discussion. Uh, I think uh, Emika is well prepared uh, with the initial parts, uh, the, the presentation regarding the two-week wait and uh, the further examination was spot on. Uh, I would say, I mean, um, there's no, no concerns, but maybe uh, as an improvement, what I would suggest is to use more keywords the examiners really like to uh, hear the keywords and that will help you to move on really fast because as you know we are racing against the time in the examination yeah. 10 minutes uh, like if you for example when you explain TRBT, TRBT you can say straight away that i will do a piecemeal resection uh, or a on block resection things like that so if yeah. you the, keyword, the good thing about that is you have to explain less yeah uh, the examiner knows that you know the subject so uh, he or she will just directly go to the next question in the paper, even, even in front of them. But otherwise, yeah, really, really excellent discussion. Thank you. Good. Um, my uh, feedbacks are Emika. Number one, knowledge is good. No concerns at this stage. Uh, I'm sure you will get only better from here. So that gives a lot of confidence. And I'm happy with your communication. Naturally, you got a kind of a very slow paced, uh, a clear verbalization. That's very good. Uh, uh, and so that the examiner is able to clearly hear you what you say that's very important whether you're saying wrong or correct first of all examiner should hear what you say and also your your pace is good a lot of trainees uh, nearer the exam they will increase and speed up their speech uh, which is sometimes okay it uh, gives them the opportunity to fill in so, so much of things they have read in a small time frame but uh, sometimes the examiners can't uh, get it back. So uh, your pace is correct. And I think if you keep up the pace, uh, that will be very good for the full exam training areas and also in the exam. Uh, as I said, even for this uh, trial sessions, what we are doing now, have a paper and pen so that you will start noting down the values and other things so that uh, everything will, will clearly uh, shape you up for the exam date. Um, for the initial few weeks, as I said, I'm not going to dwell a lot on the images or few other things. So we will discuss a, a generic platform so that you guys are called keeping a nice wavelength and falling into groove for the exam oriented talking. That's more important now. And uh, maybe after your BOWS course, we will take it uh, image based. I will prepare specific images for specific scenarios and uh, we will discuss in much more specific. Okay?
Yeah, thank you. Um, anything specific you are expecting or deviating from the semica, or you're happy with this present plan? No, I, I am. I'm actually very happy with this because you know this. It, it's all about getting in, getting the the pace right, uh, being confident to deliver your answers. I believe, um, and this comes with practice. So, so this yeah. is a very good forum to to rehearse and practice before the exam. So, thanks, thanks very much. Very good. So we'll do one more bladder cancer session. At the time, we will finish the muscle invasive part of it. Uh, it will be a little bit more elaborative and quite a deep discussion. And uh, that will complete the bladder cancer. And then next, we'll go to prostate cancer. Okay? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for joining today.